You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. You probably noticed this yesterday. Uh, it popped on social media. LSU has added a, another member of its 2022 class. Uh, Gregory Clayton, former Lutcher standout with the JUCO route, then Texas San Antonio now is an LSU Tiger, and he's in studio with us now. But he said just to call him G. So what's up, G? What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, I really appreciate you coming in studio today. I, you know, I was telling you this off air. Whenever LSU pops a commit or a transfer, something like that, I go like deep dive. I like mm -hmm. to find out a lot, whatever information. It was really hard to find info about your story. So mm -hmm. I'm fascinated to know. Let's just start. Let, let's go chronologically and go back to, all right, you're at Lutcher. You're a three-star. You're a top 250 player in the country. Mm -hmm. Why'd you go the JUCO route? Um, first off, I went the JUCO route because, I mean, obviously I didn't do what I had to do like in the classroom mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So... Um, my grades held me back a lot, you know, coming out of high school. So that's what made me go to JUCO route. What were you thinking? Like, what offers did you have? What were you entertaining? This was back in 2018, mm -hmm. right? Class 2018. What mm -hmm. what schools were were interested back then? Um, I had a lot of schools that was interested. I mean, I had Texas State. I mean, I had Tulane, um, um, Tennessee. I mean, it was a lot of schools that I had interested in me. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't remember all of them offhand, yeah. but you know it. I couldn't really go to him because of the situation that I had in the classroom. Yeah. You know? So you go the JUCO route. And how much of your focus there was, was improving on the field? How much of your focus was, man, let me just get my academics right so I can get back into the, the FBS at some point? Um, my focus was strictly on school. You know, I knew I was talented enough to go there and, you know, pick up offers again. You know, so based off the connection that I had, um, in high school, so that those connections stayed with me, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, as far as coaches checking on me to see how I was doing and stuff like that, so I was strictly focused on doing what I had to do in the classroom. What coaches checked on you? Um, I mean, um, Coach Frank checked on me yeah. a lot. Um, you know, Coach Slater from Tulane checked on me a lot. So it was like a lot of coaches that I was connected with in Louisiana since like day one that was checking on me and making sure that I was doing the right things academically. Of course, Frank Wilson's back at LSU now, so yeah. uh, I'm sure there's a tie there with your days at UTSA, which which we'll come back to. So, uh, so you spent two years yeah. in JUCO, 2018 and 2019, Correct. right? So, walk me through that process. That what was it like for you on the field at the JUCO level? Um, on the field, I mean, it was good. You know, the game moved a lot slower. You know, so um, it was good for me on the field. You know, so I would I just had to get adapted to like being in the JUCO route and just had to get my mind right you know, about like being in JUCO, you know what I'm saying? Because you know that's the lowest of the lowest. Mm. So I just had to wrap my mind about around being in junior college and like trying to get everything right academically, first and foremost. So it's a little bit, is it fair to say that it's kind of like an ego check? You know, you're, yeah, you're, sure. you're a, a, I mean, you're a top 250 player in the country, you know, uh, you get Tennessee, some other big schools, and then mm. you find yourself at, at the JUCO level. Yeah, it was definitely a, a something I had to, you know, look forward to, you know, and, and get, wrap my mind around, you know, going to dream college. What do you think you, what do you think you learned about, about yourself or how, what ways do you think you matured or developed or did you at JUCO? Um, I matured a lot. You know, it was, it came to a time, you know, when I actually thought about like giving up, you know what I'm saying? Based off the living conditions in dream college, you know, and you know, I'm just, I just was so thankful for my support system that I had at the time, you know, to keep me going and give me original encouragement to keep going, you know. So, you know, that was definitely a hard time for me, and I feel like mm -hmm. I've grown a lot, you know, through you, that, going that process. When you said the living conditions, you mean like facilities, facilities for the program and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, like facilities and, I mean, even feel dorm it, rooms. Oh, really? You feel that Lutcher was nicer than what you played on Juco, I bet. Yeah, definitely was. I've been, I've been down to Lutcher, bro. I've, yeah. I've talked to that Lutcher quarterback club before, mm -hmm. man. They are serious uh, right. down that part of the, uh, of the state right. about their high school football. Uh, Gregory Clayton is with us. Everybody calls him G. He's a new LSU commit, although uh, you actually committed a while back. Yeah. How yeah. long ago? Um, I've actually been here 
for um, three weeks. All right, you've been here for three weeks. Yeah, so I actually been doing summer workouts and everything, but I kind of been keeping it a secret a little bit. You, <laughs> you know just kept saying? it on so the down low. I just kept it on the down low. It was so. like, who's the new guy running sprints right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. so let's so let, take me then from you spend two years at junior college. Yes, and then you go to Texas San Antonio. Coach Frank, yeah, is there? How did that recruitment go? Went because you're. I was. I mean, it's hard to find JUCO stats sometimes, but you didn't play a, a ton in junior mm. college. There wasn't a huge sample size there. So, yeah. what was your re-recruitment like when you left JUCO and ended up at Texas San Antonio? Um, my re-recruitment was kind of going slow at first. You know what I'm saying? Then my second year, then it picked up. You know, a lot. And um, I had like SMU and stuff like that because I was there, um, like close to Dallas. Yeah, you were So in Texas. I had like SMU and then um, Coach Frank. And UTSA came in the picture. So I was like, this is a no-brainer. You know, I've been having a connection with Coach Frank since I was about 12 or 13 years old. So I've been knowing Coach Frank. You know, so that definitely was a, a no-brainer. So what happened was um, Coach Frank offered me, and then I committed, like, the same day, you mm -hmm. know, based off the relationship we had. But when I was going in to UTSA, Coach Frank was leaving out because I didn't actually get there until um, the summer. And Coach Frank left there. Um, in the spring, so I didn't even get a chance to, you know, be there with Coach Frank. So he left for McNeese, so you never got to play for him at UTSA. Yeah, never got to play for him. So was it? Um, so you st did you ever think about maybe following him to McNeese, or were you just pot committed to being at at Texas San Antonio? Um, I did think about it at, at the time, but I just feel like, you know, I kind of wanted to be in Texas. You know, what I'm saying just to. You know, have a little space and have a little free mind to where I can, you know, get away from things for a little while, you know. So I think I made a – I wish I would have went to UTA. I mean, went to Magnese. Oh, really? Yeah. I Why? wish I would have because just based off the relationship that I had with Coach Frank. You, you know, think he would have known how to use you offensively? Yes. Was that part of – so did you play receiver at UTSA? Yes, I did. Because primarily I noticed that it was – you played special teams. Mm -hmm. You played, played some defense? Not really. Okay, no, no defense. No just, defense. Just receiver and, and special teams. Just receiver and special so teams. So what, what was – why didn't you get more involved offensively there uh, at San Antonio? Um, just based off the relationship, and I feel like it's the coaching staff. I mean, I feel like the coaching staff kind of had their guys mm -hmm. from Texas that they wanted to showcase, and I guess I just wasn't one of those guys, you know, so um, – I guess it was just circumstances like that that I just feel like it's like uh, stuff that I couldn't really control, yeah. you know? So that was the situation. Gregory Clayton is in studio with us. New LSU wide receiver. I, I guess we call you a signee because you're, I mean, you're officially on board. By the way, are you are you walking on or are you a scholar taking up a, an initial 25 scholarship? Um, walking on. So you're walking on. Yeah. Um, let's talk about how that, because I was wondering about the numbers too, how they're working. I didn't know if they have spots left. Mm -hmm. How how did that contact first go? So you're at UTSA. Mm -hmm. How did the contact first? I, I would assume it was Frank Wilson who reached out. Who reached out to you? How and when? Um, it was Coach Frank Wilson reached out to me. And um, at first, being up in the pool, it was kind of tricky. You know, I kind of got nervous a little bit about the situation that was going to go on with me. And you know, Coach Frank reached out to me, and you know, I feel like this is the best decision that I could have made. You know. Why were you nervous? Um, just being in the portal, you know, that's, that's, that can make you nervous. You know, not talking to a lot of schools and then, you know, not really knowing what's going to happen with you. So I, I noticed you posted on your social media when you entered the portal. How long did it take from when you entered the portal to have schools reach out? Because that is one of the things, right? Like, got you go in the portal, but just because you enter the portal doesn't mean you're going to have a landing spot. Like, someone has to have a spot for you, right? Yeah. So how long did it take for, for schools to reach out? Um, as soon as I entered, a couple of schools reached out to me, but no one was really pulling the trigger, like offering scholarships and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what happened. So when did, uh, when did Coach Frank first make contact with you? Um, I can't really say offhand. Okay. Does, um, and I guess it's interesting because, you know, when he was hired by Brian Kelly, did you think that could be an opportunity to, to go to go back to Louisiana? Yeah, I thought it was an opportunity, but I wasn't 100% sure at the time. Okay. So when you, when you first made 
made contact, whatever that was. Did, did you come to LSU for a visit? Um, not really even a visit. Like, I just came, and then that was it, you know? So he made the offer and said, said, come on. Yeah. And you said, I'm in. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> I mean, that, that was it. You didn't even need to come, come meet the coaching staff. You didn't need to come see the facilities or anything. It was just opportunity to be on LSU's team, and you're in. Yeah, because I already knew a lot of coaches on the staff. Like, I knew Coach um, – Joe Sloan, okay. he was at Louisiana Tech, so I, I had you know, a relationship with, with all of those guys. So I didn't really need to meet anyone because I knew a lot of coaches on the staff already. So when I got the opportunity, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. What's Coach Sloan like? Tell us about him. Um, I feel like he's a, he's a great person, you know, a great person to be around and you know, a very encouraging person. And um, he's chill, laid back, and he's a great dude. Um, we're, we're actually going to get to talk to Joe Sloan on the show tomorrow, so I'm excited to have him and, um, mm -hmm. and to talk about it a little bit. But um, All right, so you've been there now, you said, for three weeks. Yeah. How's the, the transition uh, academically going for you? All's good? Yeah, transition is going good academically. You know, I've changed a lot since high school. Mm -hmm. you know, so some of those same, same mistakes that I was making in high school, you know, I'm not making those mistakes anymore because I know what it's like to be at rock bottom. So definitely not trying to go back there. Yeah, man. It's funny with um, just living a little, how that uh, will, will mature you and force you to mature at times. Um, yeah. What about, uh, have you met, so you're going to play receiver? Yeah. Have you met Coach Hankton? Yes. So what's he like? What's it been like? Uh, I guess they can't do any on-field work with you right now. Y'all doing workouts. But what's yeah. it been like with meeting Coach Hankton? Um, it's, been, it's, it's been great. You know, he's a very cool coach. You know, I've been having a connection with Coach Hankton since he was at um, Vanderbilt. So, um, okay. You know, so he's very cool. So you've uh, you do so you do already had the relationship yeah. with a lot of guys on the staff. So it doesn't make sense. What about players? Have you, did you did you know anybody on this team? Yeah, I knew a lot of players. You know, but I wasn't close to him because I was in Texas. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we would stay in contact. So I knew a lot of players on the team. Who are some of the guys that I'm trying to think back to who was on the team who was here in, in 2018 when you signed? Who are some of the guys? That'd be older guys, right? Um, yeah, that'd be older guys. Like I knew John Trey Kirkland. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. My quarterback in high school. I didn't um, even think about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was it like watching him play quarterback in the bowl game again? It was phenomenal. Yeah. Like it was a dream come true for him, and also for me too to see him play quarterback at a big stage like this. Yeah. So that was great. Man, that was that was something. <laughs> that yeah. was like I mean for, to have not played quarterback in five years and then to go out there and have to spin it in the bowl game was was something a, a sight yeah. to behold. So. How have, uh, how have the workouts been going, right? Because right now y'all are all in conditioning, right? Yeah. How's it going? Workouts have been going great for me so far. You know, a little hot outside, but yeah. it's been going good. What's a normal, what's a normal day like um, whenever you all get your, your schedule? What, what's a day like for you? Um, so a normal day is like, um, say for instance, like on a Monday, we would like work out at 7 a.m. Um, we would do some stretching on the field, do some running. Then we would go in the weight room and lift. Mm -hmm. And then we would have meetings, you know, and that's kind of really how the day goes. We have like dinner check and stuff like that too. So that's how the day goes. So you have meetings like with your position coaches? Yeah. What, I don't know to what degree you can d yeah. disclose, but like what can you tell so far about, but are y'all doing player-led workouts right now? Like y'all getting on the field, like you catching passes, yeah. running routes and stuff. Yeah. What can you tell so far what kind of like what the offense is going to be like? Like what what sort of vibe do you get being around around the offensive rooms and with your teammates? Um, I get a great vibe, you know. Um, as far as with my teammates and you know everybody, it's a great vibe, and I feel like we're gonna have a great offense. And once we get a chance to put everything together, everything's gonna fall in place for us. Have you gotten a chance to meet Brian Kelly yet? Yes. Yeah. So what's it been like, kind of getting to know him a little bit? Um, I didn't really get a chance to talk to him that much. You know, we mm -hmm. just shook hands and. Pass a few words, you know, but it's been great meeting him. You know, it's been a dream come true to meet Brian Kelly. Yeah? Yeah. You, you were telling me off air, um, I mean, you talk about a guy who's won everywhere he's been, right? So what's yeah. it, I mean, what's it like for you to play for a guy that, I mean, he'll, he'll be a college football Hall of Famer, right? I mean, he's yeah. won over 200 games in his career, whatever. Mm -hmm. what, I mean, what's it like being, playing for Brian Kelly? Um, you thought about it? Yeah. I'm thinking about it right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, I feel like it's going to be a great, great, great to, you know, being on the team that Brian Kelly is leading, you know, and the guy that's, you know, always winning, you know, and and I'm excited to be a part of the culture that he's going to set. Yeah. Are you, um, you mentioned that you played some special teams at UTSA. Is that something that they've talked about doing or that you're willing to do at LSU also? 
yeah, I'm willing to do anything, you know, to help this team win. So whatever that, that whatever I need to do to help this team win, I'm willing to do it, yeah. whatever it is. Um, you also mentioned to me that so being from Lutcher, I asked you about Jarvis. Yeah, right. Because I was looking at your at your uh, at your Twitter, mm-hmm. and you got a lot of Jarvis videos and stuff. So you're related to Jarvis. Yes. So tell uh, tell our audience how, how y'all are related. So his mom and my dad are brothers and sisters. So, so y'all are first cousins. cousins. Yeah. Um, what was it like watching Jarvis play at Lutcher? It was phenomenal. I mean, it was a freak show watching Jarvis play. <laughs> you know, five star under him, all American. You know, so it was a freak show watching him play. Um, you excited to see him back in in Louisiana playing for the Saints? Of course. Yeah. You so you're a Saints fan? Yes. Thank I'm God. a Saints fan now. Um, now, wait, wait. Now you weren't before. I weren't before. How could you be from Lutcher and not be a Saints fan? Who's your team? I actually didn't have a favorite me, NFL team. Okay. I had favorite players. All right. Who's your favorite players then? Jarvis is my favorite player. Well, of course. Okay. But outside of that, so you cheered for for Miami and you cheered for Cleveland, yeah. wherever wherever he went. Okay. Yeah. So now it's now it's Saints. You didn't have an NFL team growing up, even though you grew up right never, outside of New Orleans. Never had a favorite NFL team. I How? always had favorite players. How? I don't know. All right, so who else were your favorite players? Um, I would say Larry, Larry Fitzgerald. Okay. Um, I know I'm a little young, but I will have to go with Jerry Rice. Okay. You know, Chris Carter, um, Steve Smith. So you know the game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So what's a receiver that you would say you sort of fit sort of that mold? What are you, 5'10", five, 5'11", five, right around there? 5'11". Five, 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 six, right, so six, five, six foot. Um, so it, what receiver would you say is a good comp for you? I would say... Um, a guy like Jarvis, um, and maybe like Chris Carter, and Steve Smith, I would mm. say. Okay. You know, just the way they be able to, you know, create separation, you know, and make the catch. Chris Carter, man. All yeah. He, all he does is catch touchdowns. That's man. all he does. He's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, I appreciate you for coming in. Uh, it's really good to see you. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to be excited to follow you and follow your story and your progression. So what, have you set any goals yet? for yourself for for this year and by the way so do you have another year because of COVID or is this your last year um I have two years left so you have two years okay yeah. I thought so because COVID it's so weird like you got to do this math with everybody now it's like all right <laughs> hold on like how many you, you played in year five 18 carry the one mm. okay so goals for this year um goals this year I would say is just be the best Gregory Clayton that I can be okay you know not set the bar too high not set it too low just be the best that I can be in you know bring 100 percent effort every single day you know, so that's the goals that I set for myself, and the rest is going to take care of itself. Brian Kelly has made it, thank you has made it such a uh, a, a point to um, uh, to bring Louisiana guys home, and uh, you're another one. We look forward to we welcome you home, and de- definitely look forward to um, uh, to watching you play and get out there this year, man. Can't wait for you guys to watch me. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.